Heather and Michael decide there's only one way to check on the man's welfare. Yeah, Radio, can you please get on to police rescue and ask them to attend our location to open a door for us, please? A bit nervous. Heather has never seen a dead body before. It's 11pm. Heather and partner Constable Michael Stepanian attend a unit in the city. Um, we're here because we got a call basically from radio to attend because there's been a concern for welfare. Yeah, how you doing, mate? It's Constable Stepanian from City Central Police. We're trying to get to a unit that's on your floor there. An informant has called police worried about a male friend who's failed to return phone calls. Empty. He hasn't been seen or heard from for a week and his mate was concerned, yeah, mate, so he's police, called us. Have you heard or seen your neighbour uh, from the number 36 at all? No. Can you see from your balcony onto his balcony at all? I haven't even checked, but you're welcome. Is that all right? Yes. You mind? <laughs> There's a television on in there. Oh, God. And you can actually see a TV or something flashing in there. So it kind of indicates to us that there could be someone in there. Heather and Michael decide there's only one way to check on the man's welfare. Yeah, Radio, can you please get on to police rescue and ask them to attend our location to open a door for us, please? 99% of the time it is a nothing job, but the last thing we want it to be is a something job and then have to come back here in a month's time if there's a bad smell coming from the apartment. I really hope there's not a deceased in there. Uh, well, <laughs> you joined the job. Oh, okay. What did you want to do? <laughs> you just wanted to join? I walk in like this. Don't really know how I'm going to react if something is pretty bad in there. Yeah. Please. Please, can you hear me? Hang on, before you go in. Oh, there's a um, sign on the floor saying beware carbon monoxide. Mask needed. Just make your exit. Police rescue, we've got all their gear now. Basically, their oxygen stuff to go in and find out if there is a chemical leak or what exactly has happened. A note has been found on the floor warning of a deadly gas. If he has had a gas leak and he's left, but it's kind of pointing towards the other way at the moment. Do you guys want a torch? Don't really looking good right now, as you can tell. Yes, down. Yep. Or, um, I'll, shut, I'll take it down. We've been all over it. We've aired out the windows. There's no other danger there, so. Alright, no worries. We'll post them. Alright. Just, just, just one. I, I, it's a crime scene, so we just can't have everyone come through. So I stay here? Yes, please. Yes. I don't think we were really expecting it when we turned up. We thought we'd just kind of get a no answer and leave, but, yeah. I'll have a talk to you before you go in there. I'm not going in there, am I? Not yet, not yet. Hello? Yeah. Can you start a crime scene log, please? Yep. We maintain a yes. crime scene until it's established that it's uh, not suspicious. OK. Heather will have to record Very everyone well. who comes in and out of the apartment. So, our worst fears. You know, that 1% that I mentioned before, that 1%, unfortunately, has, has come. It's sad. I was just telling Heather before, 
you know, you just got to separate yourself from it and just do our job. That's what we're here for. So we're going to have to show her, unfortunately, there are goods and bads of this job, so, yeah. Heather guards the crime scene as police photographers, detectives and undertakers do their work. Right now we've been here five hours. I'm losing track of time. A long time, just waiting. At 5am, undertakers remove the man's body. It's a bit sad just seeing it, not really knowing what's going on or why or what has happened really. So. We'll just keep going down a little bit. Three months ago, Heather <laughs> Atwater, just 19, graduated from police college. I suppose the thing that does scare you is no matter what they teach you here, you're never going to be prepared. But every cop you meet, you're like, it's nothing like this in the real world. I suppose the first deceased you go to, they always tell you that you're always going to remember it. I suppose you have to learn to deal with it. Just don't touch and, anything. Oh, yeah. Now Heather and partner Michael enter the apartment of a deceased man to record evidence for the coroner. Boxes that are filled with some property that the deceased has packed and addressed to different people. He left all the lights off in the place when we got here and he actually sort of killed the main switch, the main power to the apartment, but for some reason the TVs were still left on, so... It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense, but um, unfortunately not much does. It's a little sad just looking at where it's actually happened. Um, yeah, this is probably the closest I've been to death in this job uh, for life here. Uh, right now the time is 5.15. We've been here for about six hours. So right now we have to go to RPA hospital, follow the morgue people there and um, basically get a death certificate, and then straight from there, we go to the morgue. Yeah. Uh. 6am, probationary constable Heather is at Sydney's Glebe morgue. The deceased man has been brought here after being pronounced dead at hospital. The death is not suspicious. I'm going to leave Heather with uh, one of the workers to just get a description of the body, clothing and property that's on the person. A bit nervous. Heather has never seen a dead body before. As bad as it sounds, you sort of go cold, but you just, you have to. Otherwise, you go to these things and they start affecting you, then you probably won't last long in the job. Calm, boss. Police are required to witness the body being searched. Yep, that looks like it. All right, I'm going to go start this form. You right now? You're leaving me in here with the body? Yeah. I sort of feel guilty leaving Heather in there. But she's going to have to learn it eventually. Unfortunately, it's just part of the job. Hey, clothing, my hair or grey shorts? She's still young. You know, she's only 19. So, you know, putting that sort of responsibility on someone's pretty scary. One of those things, mate. And that's no longer a person, that's just a vessel, a body. Just depends when we've got the pictures, possibly. Yeah. You right? Yeah, I'm just gonna do my work now. Let's go outside and we'll have a quick talk outside. Come on. You right? Hang in there. Hang in there. All right? It's what we do. All right? This is the that part of the job. Nothing is worse than this. You've just done that. That's incredible. <laughs> nothing wrong with having a couple of tears. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Oh, God. All right. Oh, I just want to go home. I'm going to go to bed. Tired. <sighs> what was going through your head? So sad. Sad? Like you're, you're really young, and for you to do that, oh. it's a human reaction. It's absolutely human. The thing now that you do have to do 
and whether it's an act or whatever, now you pull yourself together because there's going to be times when you come across that and you can't let members of the public see that. What's most affected you? What's, what's made you cry? It's just sad. Why someone would do that at such a young age? It's just sad. There's no answer to it, is there? That's something you can really can't explain. And it isn't for us to try and work out the whys. What was his frame of mind or anything like that? We've got to establish the facts in this case. And that's all that matters. And if you've got to be cold-hearted about it, you've got to be cold-hearted about it. Yeah. But you're doing really well, Heather. You're really doing well. <sighs> Wish to the you paperwork. Yeah. Hard work. Need to that's the cure all. Yeah.